what conclusion can we make? All, all cities had a specific design, uh, complicated design like uh, crystal, crystal structure and fractal structure. Uh, all were on specific place on uh, with huge energy knots, uh, full of energy. All cities were inside star forts and had star forts inside of them. And shape of star forts remind me fractals and uh, behavior of water uh, under some frequencies applied. I mean, it's not coincidence because fractal also some specific uh, uh, mathematical rules, uh, equations and frequencies. And frequencies influence on water, on crystals, and actually water is also crystal. That's why it behaves like this, like uh, mercury, uh, that's why li liquid but metal, mercury is a very good conductor uh, of energies, that's why it's prohibited. And I see the correlation between, and I can make parallel between fractals and behavior of water and some mathematical laws which i will explain four, here four, this guy will explain much so, better so we'll thank you one two three four now a uh, quick question what do all of them have in common mm, well i would be really surprised if you guessed this one here <laughs> Huh? They're, they're, full of lines. they're full of lines and they're in a circle and these sort of things. <laughs> but actually, pictures of time tables. Ah, okay. <laughs> pictures of time tables. I better explain this, all right? So, to get these pictures, what you do is um, you start with a circle and then you pick a random number, okay? And we'll just choose something nice to so start with a 10, okay? So, then with 10, we put 10 points on the, on the perimeter here, equally spaced, and then we label them with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's just go. Actually, we start with zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two. And then 10 we also want. So we kind of put that right there again. So that's also 10, that's also 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on, okay? And then again, and so on, right? So this guy here stands for one, 11, 21, 31, and so on, okay? And now we're going to do the two times table, okay? So two times table. And we'll start with zero. So two times zero is? Zero. So zero is the same thing, so we don't do anything. Okay, uh, two times one is? Two. Two, okay, so we connect the one to the two. Then uh, two times two is? Four. Okay, so we do this, and we keep on going. Pretty obvious. Now five, two times five is? Ten. Ten, ten. remember, ten's also over there, so we connect that guy up. And then uh, 2 times 6 is 12, which is also the 2. So we connect that one and you kind of just keep on going like this. Okay? And then you're at 9 and you've pretty much gone all the way around. Now you could go on. So for example, we could now do 2 times 10 and 2 times 11 and 2 times 12 and, and draw in those connections. But actually, the connections are going to be exactly the ones that we've already drawn. We can actually stop here. Just to illustrate, let's just go up to 2. 2 times 12 is? 24, which corresponds to the 4, and that connection is already there, right? And 2 times 13 is? Uh, not quite. <laughs> 2 times 13? 26. And we've already got the 6. Of course, we made a choice there at the beginning, that 10, right? If you change that 10 to anything else, well, the picture changes, but pretty much everything I said stays the same, okay? So, for example, if you switch from 10 to 11, we get this guy here. You know, and then 12, 13, 14, 15, and let's just see what happens. Hmm. So, pretty quick, nice. Quick question. Yeah. All these pictures that you're showing, it seems that they are um, symmetric. Yep. In, in the horizontal axis. That's right. Mirror. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Is, is that for a particular reason? Yep, there's a reason. And actually, uh, let's just give this as homework for our guys here to figure out. So, in the comments, tell us why there's a symmetry. <laughs> of course, what's much more interesting here is uh, that curve that somehow magically materializes when you kind of up the number that you choose at the beginning. Okay, and actually, uh, I'll just highlight it a bit. So there's this strange curve here, it's actually got a name. It pops up all over mathematics. It's called a cardioid. Um, like in cardiology, it means heart. Okay, so it's like a heart curve, mathematical heart curve. And it comes up in all kinds of places, and I'll just show you a few, okay? 
So for example, you can have it as a rolling curve. You roll one circle around another circle and just see what happens to one of the points on the boundary of the rolling circle. Okay, so it's going to go over here. And what it does is it traces the car joint. Okay? Um, now where else can you see it? Well, sometimes you can see it in your coffee cup. If you've got a conical coffee cup like this and the sun is in the direction of one of those green lines in the coffee cup, then you can also see a uh, cardioid in there. Where else? Um, well, there, right there in the Mandelbrot set. So the biggest bulb in the Mandelbrot set is a cardioid. Uh, the second one is actually a perfect circle. Uh, now, this would be a good one to, to figure out why, why is this guy a cardioid? And so I'm just going to trace this down somewhere. Um, now, just um, for those people who know something about this stuff, that's the equation that we use to make up the Mandelbrot set and there's a 2 in there, okay? So that's important. We just had the 2 times table. So let's just keep going, okay? Now, yeah? If you want... Um, Maybe we'll do another video on this. Yeah. Okay, now uh, we can also, instead of doing the um, 2 times table, we can do the 3 times table. And if we do the 3 times table, well, what we get is this pattern here for initial choice 10. And then I'll just, you know, up, up the numbers there. And what do we get? Whoa, another curve. Another very famous curve is called the nephroid, which is a kidney, you know. <laughs> okay, whereas this one is also as a rolling curve. Here the, uh, the circle that rolls is half the size of the one that is rolling uh, around. Um, it's also in a generalized Mandelbrot set. So remember, uh, before we had an exponent 2 here, now we're talking about 3 times table, we change the exponent to 3 and you actually get the main bulb here being the nephroid. Okay, we also get it in a coffee cup. This time we need a like a straight coffee cup, mm -hmm. and uh, the light rays kind of come in um, like from from one side. Okay, so they kind of come in straight like this, and then they kind of bounce around inside the cup and and make up this curve. Actually, you know, this way of making up a, a curve is called a catacaustic in, in mathematics. So there we go. What else have we got? Four times. Yeah, you can see, kind of see a pattern now. You know, four times gets you three, three petals. Before we had you know, three times two petals. Um, okay, and then all these other things that we've kind of been highlighting here. There were two there. You know, exponents gone up to four. There's the generalized Mandelbrot set here. Now we've got the rolling curve happening again, right? And then just for good measure, just one more guy here. That's the five. So it gets four petals. Um, and we've got the Mandelbrot set here and we've got the rolling curve. So are all very, very neat, okay? So the number of petals is... Okay, or actually do the, the, the transition here continuously. So I'll just show you, if I just do the multiplication times 2.1, what do you get? Uh, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, and 3. And you can kind of see how the cardio turns into this nephroid, which is kind of cool, right? Um, and now I just let it go <laughs> and the numbers are going up and you can see the petals going more and more and more and more, right? So just continuously. And well, you think, well, that's probably what, what it's going to be. You, know? uh, you can also look at this in the, in the Mandelbrot set and you can actually see exactly this sort of pattern here happening in the middle. And if you kind of push the exponent to infinity, the whole thing kind of turns into one big circle. You know, that's pretty cool. Okay, and that's, you know, I think that's the, at the end of it, but no, 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 let's just keep keep going here, right? <laughs> so the petals are, are pretty much going to go away now. Um, but if you just look at what's happening here, you see there's a lot more you know, structure somehow being hinted at, right? I mean, I'm, we're moving very fast at the moment, right? We're moving very fast. But if you actually went through this frame by frame, you would see a lot of really, really nice structure happening. And I've highlighted a bit here. So just a few of the frames that you get, you know, some really amazing stuff happening here. So if you stop at 33, you get this one here. Stop at 34, you get that one here. And there's a couple of other highlights here. There's a lot more. So that's this, this how many I could fit here. Right? Okay, and maybe have a close look at some of them, okay? So here we've got four. Now the number that all these correspond to is actually 200, okay? 200. What we're really doing here has a special name in mathematics, okay? So what we're really doing here is we're doing the times table modulo 200. Okay, so it's got a special name. Um, it's actually incredibly important in all sorts of applications to do this sort of uh, modular arithmetic. 
Okay, but anyway, for our purposes, you know, you, you understand how it's, it's built up, and if you know a little bit more, you know a little bit more. <laughs> okay, so for two times table, we get the car dirt. For the 34 times table, modulo 200, we get this guy here. And then some other things, interesting things happen. So for example, for if you multiply by 51, we get this guy here. And if you multiply by 99, we'd get that guy here. And obviously, I mean, if you just look at the two numbers here below, you know, and a 51 is pretty close to, you know, one fourth of 200, so it must have something to do with that. 99 is pretty close to one half of 200, must have something to do with that, right? Okay, now, I really wanted to explain something. I really want to explain where this one here comes from. And, um, well, I mean, the first time I saw this, I was pretty surprised, like pretty much everybody that sees it, but then I remembered something. I had seen the cardioid before in, you know, many, many different guises. And in one particular one that I was familiar with, I could see where the connection is. And I just want to tell you about that one, okay? And it's got to do with uh, this light rays bouncing around. It's a little bit different from what we had before, okay? So basically we've got a circle here, and then we've got a light source right over on that side, right? And that circle kind of reflects the light, right? So we switch on the light over there, and then, well, what happens? Well, light rays kind of emanate in all kinds of directions, get reflected off uh, the circle, right? Bounce around and you kind of see this, this pattern here emerging, the cardioid. Yeah? So I knew this one. I had actually calculated the curve, you know, from this description at some point in university, okay? Then they can actually really see very easily why the cardioid comes up in the two times table. I just want to show you, okay? So let's just highlight um, like one of those rays coming out. It kind of hits the wall here, okay? and then it gets reflected at the same angle as it comes in, right? So this angle here that you see here is the same as there, right? And you can see it kind of goes like that. Okay, so what does that tell us now? Well, if we, um, if we put this line here in the middle, it means that this side really flips over to that side here, which means that this segment here in particular is exactly as long as that one here, right? So if I travel from from this light bulb to this point, and then from this point to that point, it's exactly the same distance, okay? So that's, that's going to be important. Okay, so let's make this zero. Let's call this n. So what's 2n then, right? So to get 2n, what you have to do is we have to measure this distance here, and then you have to measure it again. Where do we get? Right up there. Right? And so it's pretty clear that when you do the two times thing, you get that reflected ray, um, you know, in, in the picture. Just to finish off, I'm going to show you a little bit of a movie of all the stuff evolving a little bit slower than what we had before.